He is a living God. How do I know? Because he lives within me. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have that same testimony. That he's able to live. In him I live, I move, and I have my being. There is no life outside of Christ. You better know him today. Jesus is the answer, I say, for the world today. Glory be to God. So, so, so what I should let you know is before I get into this new world order, this one world system, the book of Revelations, all of the judgments, the dooms, the vows, the judgment of the Lamb of God, the wrath of the Lamb of God. We've seen him as a, as a, a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. We've seen him as that meek and lowly one. But there is a wrath of the Lamb that is to come. That he shall pour upon the whole earth, all the inhabitants of the earth, and those not found within him will find themselves in hell temporarily, which is just a holding place, but afterwards in the lake of fire, to be eternally separated from their God after the great judgment, the great white throne judgment. And so he says, blessed are they who don't even have to come to the second death. You, you won't have no power over you. See, if you just die today, if you just die to yourself today, you already punch your ticket to be on the winning side, to be on victory side. Hallelujah, somebody. And so while it looks crazy, while things in the world today look like these things will not be, the word of the Lord stands sure. Where he says that heaven and earth will pass away. It will all roll back up into him before he lets one jot a tittle of his word pass away. That's the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet. He'll let it pass away. But we know that our God is not even able. Even if he tried, he's not able to fail. And that same God that created this whole universe, this whole world, and the things within, that same God lives within you. It's Christ within you. That is the hope of glory. Somebody get a hold of faith right now. Before you hear these things, I'm about to speak it to your ears. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Well, we honor the Lord this morning. We thank God for everybody watching on Facebook, everybody who will stream later. Thank God for you, children of the Most High God, who are assembled here. We thank God for you assembled here because he says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of you. Even after his Life, death, burial, resurrection, ascension. He came back and he told the ladies, don't touch me because I haven't ascended to my father as yet. But he came back and he spent 40 days, 40 days ministering. 40 days on earth ministering. Here was the disciples are sitting and talking about having heard him, having heard from him, singing up on them on the road to Emmaus. And once he got there, once they got there, they started to tell the rest of the of the saints how, how it burned in their hearts because they were still in unbelief. And then he opened up the scriptures to them, showed them how these things must be that have been spoken of in the Psalms, in the law, and the prophets concerning him. That he should be crucified, 
buried, and on the third day, rise again. He had to go through those things because it was already spoken of him. The suffering Savior, Isaiah 53. So you think it not strange when we find ourselves in the Old Testament today because it is the foundation upon which the new covenant sits. It is the shadow, the type. So that when the real thing, when the anti-type comes, we will be able to recognize it. We'll be able to see the continuity from the old covenant to the new. What God has declared his mind is towards his people. What his statutes, his judgments, his commandments are for us to keep them, to do them, and to walk in his ways. Then we are able to have good success. Then blessed we shall be in the city, blessed we shall be in the field, blessed shall be our coming and our going. Are rising up and lying down. When enemies come against us one way, you cause them to flee seven ways. Your basket, your store, your womb, fruit of your cattle, fruit of your kind. All these blessings come when you don't forget the word of the Lord your God that you hearken unto him. So tell your neighbor, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Amen, amen. Well, we're still, we're still social distancing and abiding by the law, even though <clears throat> they, they're starting to reopen. <laughs> reopen the country for business. And that reopening of business um, has taken a calculation. The calculation is this, that the virus is still around, still active, and is still killing, in particular killing people in minorities' community at a higher clip. And the calculation is this, that it's worth more to get the economy going and than to spare those lives. And there's been a counter culture movement where Government itself foments rebellion. The same way we've done and we talked about uh, uh, in previous messages in this series about the subversive elements in government and how we go to other countries and foment rebellion there and cause uprisings. Well, that's the same thing that's happening here, where now people who are armed with their automatic semi-automatic weapons in their MAGA hats are protesting now been called the new Rosa Parks of this generation. So I put a law in place because I know that I have to do so for the public good even after I denied the existence of it and called it a hoax. After the death became, death toll piled up, came too great to continue to foment that through the media sources, uh, po media propaganda sources. And so we do a about, about face in public, but in private tell people that we don't mind you breaking these rules, these laws we put out. Even as your parishioners are dying and uh, the pastors, the bishops are dying, even as the lawyers who are making up the strategies are dying as well. <clears throat> so that's the time that we're in. It's in a time where you cannot trust your government to care about your life. Your life, your soul has to become precious to yourself. And that you have to do what's necessary to make sure that you survive. And so for with everything that I speak today, know that, of course, as we just jumped and shouted on the promises of God, that we have those. But it's as we're obedient to the word of God. 
Obedience is the best ministry in this hour. When judgment is loosed on the earth, or when God allows for certain things to cover and spread the earth like pandemics, and we're not able to come into the houses of worship, but our minds are still on our devices and on all the cares of this world, and the cares of this life. He says, if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. And so he's causing us to unplug from this world system so that he can plug you into his kingdom system so you can get a kingdom mindset. And that's what we're here today to do. We're not here after the form of fashion. What you'll hear is not a sermon as most men preach according to the order of the schedule, pre-canned things that are hermeneutically sound and good word, but do not help you to open your eyes for the, for what is going on in the midst of you. And said that the best way for, for us to preach in this hour is to have a Bible in one hand and a newspaper in the other so that we are not ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy and what's going on around us because it does affect us. So we can't just say blood of Jesus and it just makes everything right. It's not a panacea. This is not a hocus pocus incantation that we can do that causes us to be safe and that everybody else that are humans just like us to be in danger, right? So this is causing us to be sober, to be vigilant, understand that we have an enemy, an adversary, who walks about like a roaring, wine, roaring lion, seeking, seeking whom he may do what? Devour. He's trying to eat you up. Jesus in his words to Peter, Peter, the enemy desires to have you. He don't just want to sift you. He want to have you first, and then he want to sift you as wheat. So the things you once believed in strongly, now you don't believe so much anymore. The things you thought God wouldn't go for, now you say, God, he understands. He'll go for that. See? Sift you as wheat. He says, but I have done what? I have done what? Prayed for you. That's your what? Faith do what? Fail not. And when you are what? When you are what? Converted, do what? Strengthen your brethren. Strengthen your brethren. So even if you got it made, you still have to do what? Strengthen your brethren. There's no island in this thing. You're not an island unto yourself. That we all have to strengthen our brothers in the faith. Amen? Well, that's a necessary preamble. Now pick up your Bibles and turn with me. For responsive reading to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Today we're opening unto you the new world order and the one world system. So at Daniel chapter 10, beginning at verse 5, we're reading responsibly. Have it say amen. For the sake of those who are online, I'll read all together as well. And it reads, Then I lifted up mine eyes, and look, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like unto the voice of a multitude. Somebody say, Gabriel. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. Mind you of John, uh, of uh, Paul, right? 
uh, saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet I heard the voice of his words. When I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee. And stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, twenty-one days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, the archangel out of the bowl, the seventh bowl, Jehovah Nisi, he came unto me to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia, Iran and Iraq. All right. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground. And I became dumb, and behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched me my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O oh, my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? Whereas for me straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of man, and he strengthened me and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am going forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come altogether. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. All right. Amen. You may have your seats in a moment as we go further into more scripture reading. There's some scripture reading here. So we're reading selections now at Daniel chapter 11. Turn, Daniel chapter 11. So understand that we are progressing in the vision and in the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a movement forward in revelation that of what Daniel himself could see. And now what will be spoken at Daniel 11, look at verse 13. 11 and 13, and it reads, For the king of Russia, the north shall return. So the, so the king of north, king of the north is Russia. It shall return, the former USSR, the Soviet Union, it shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. And in those times there shall be Shall shall many stand up against the king of the south. We're talking about Egypt in North Africa. Also, the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish division, but they shall fall. So the king of the north, Russia, shall come and cast up a mount and take the most fit cities. And the arms of the south shall not withstand neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. Verse 20, then shall stand up in his estate a razor of taxes. Now, now, if we change that word to tariffs, you know, we, we've talked about tariffs uh, before. And so, we move 400 years 
before Jesus to now 2020. And we were engaged in a fight with who? Red China over what? Tariffs. See that? So you have to be there because that's what we're going into today. So it says, in the glory of the kingdom. So he raised text in the glory of the kingdom, but within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. Now you see the you see the destruction. You see the destruction because he replaced Matthew. Tax collection. All right. So look at verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. And with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. Verse 23. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. Verse 28, then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Verse 35, and some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. You see that white stone, that jasper stone? Even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. Verse 36, and the king shall do what? According to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. What are we talking about? The abomination that makes desolate. All right. So he says, for that, that is determined shall be done. Understand that for that, that is determined shall be done. And so what God's word says and declares, it will be done. There's nothing we can do to change it. So when he says pestilences shall come, pandemics shall come, there's nothing you can do to change them coming. What you want to do is find yourself in a safe place when they do come. Amen. So now go to verse 37 here. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. Listen. So. That means that this man that we're talking about, the man of sin, the Antichrist, the embodiment of Satan himself, just like Jesus is the embodiment of God in man's body. Satan himself tries to make a creation himself to have a son of Satan. The man of sin, the Antichrist, right? And so here it is. It means if he does not respect or regard the God of his fathers, that means that the man is, he will be Jewish or have Jewish blood. For they are the only nation to whom God is referred to as Abba. Are you with me? So, nor will he have a what? Desire for what? Women. Which means he'll be homosexual or not given, certainly to women, at all. You got it? Nor will he what? Regard any God. So if anyone rises who is a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Shinto, Shinto or Hare Krishna, what do we know? It's not the man of sin. It's not the Antichrist if he comes out of those world religions, if you will. Because he's not the one that the scriptures speak of. What do Word of God here declares that he shall magnify himself above what? All. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. See that? What, what does that look like? Looks like Aaron down at the base of the mountain with the people who have Decided, hey, we don't know what happened to Moses. He's going up in that mountain for all this time. We don't know if God done killed him. But let's make a God for ourselves. Take all of our gold and stuff and now make what? This golden cow. See that? So. Verse 39. 
Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a what? Strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. Verse 40 and 41. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a what? Whirlwind. So you're talking about Egypt coming from the south. You're talking about Russia coming from the north. With chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. So when we say horses and those things, these are things that Daniel himself at that time can recognize. Of course, he's not in the 21st century, right? Verse 41, he shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hands. Who, who are these that's going to escape out of his hands? We're, we're, we're talking about Revelations 12 now. Revelations 12. So we're talking about the, the, the we're talking about Jacob's trouble now. Right? So when you got the Antichrist that comes and he goes and he presents himself as God, Instead of offering a sacrifice on the altar, he uses what? Pig meat instead of a lamb. And now that is the, he desecrates the holy place and it now becomes the abomination that makes desolate. Right? And so that is the, the act that lets them know that the covenant that he had with them that allowed them to rebuild the temple right where the dome of the rock, the, the dome of, uh, of the rock sits, the Al-Aqsa Mosque, right? Where it sits. That is the self-same place where Abraham offered Isaac. But the Islam, Muslims say that that's the place where Abraham offered Ishmael, right? And so something has to give. There has to be something that causes for that dome to come down and for the temple of the living God to come back up. For the sacrifices to be reinstituted so that when those sacrifices are reinstituted, they are able to go back in and now make those offerings. And while this man has gained all of this power by flattery, it's come to a place where well, now he's like a snake in, snake in a bosom. And just like Eve did when she didn't recognize that he was enticing her with the things she wanted most because they want most to be able to offer sacrifice to their God. Because they know once they do so that, that there is a Messiah to come. They don't know or they don't recognize that he's already come and that he's coming again. They believe that this will be him. So he goes in and offers pig meat on the altar, desecrates the temple. And what happens? Now they know that they're in trouble. Okay? So that parallels with Revelation 12. I believe where, where it speaks of the the woman having the child, the man child, that had to be birthed and delivered. And the dragon was coming after her, and it was delivered, and it was carried into the wilderness to be kept for a time, a time, times and a half, which is three and a half years, the, sp the space of Jacob's trouble, the second half of the tribulation, all right? That's what we speak of. So for those who, who I can't go in, in scripture to scripture with, with you all today, uh, for those who are not familiar with apocalyptic scripture, are not familiar with the book of Revelation, it will take you going down and, and taking a, a deep dive and studying it. If you want to know more about it, you want to uh, uh, go into deeper, you can uh, inbox me and we can talk, particularly pastors as well. So, here, we see that we are now in Petra. You got that? They escaped by his hand into Petra. Down, down into the valley there. So when all the great destructions come against the Middle East between Jordan and Syria and Egypt and Israel, one place is spared. It is that place of Edom, the Edomites. It's the place of Edom and Moab is spared. So, we're back in the word of God when others had abandoned. Even Edom, here it is, even Edom and Moab 
and the chief of the children of Ammon. So where are we now when we talk about Ammon? It's still the same name. Ammon, what? Ammon, what? Jordan. That's where we are. So we've left Petra, and we've gone up the mountain and come to Ammon. So verse 42 says, He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of the gold and of the silver and over all the precious things of Egypt and the Libyans, right? Gaddafi's gone. And the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings, verse 44, out of the east and out of the what? North shall trouble him. Uh-oh, what's going on in the east and the north, right? Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to do what? Destroy and utterly to make away with many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall do what? Come to his end and none shall help him. Look at that. Grow up with all this power and get brought down. So you have to know the word of the Lord is true that this thing is going to come up, come up so much it's going to be able to stamp, say, Break the, the even the saints down and grind them into dust, right? That eventually it comes to naught. The word of the Lord is sure. So three and a half years—that's the time he has, right? Y'all see that time? See, I see the time. Now go to Daniel chapter twelve. See, now we're preaching tonight. All right, we're at Daniel chapter twelve. Because when all of this going on, when all of this going on, that's then when, when Michael is going to stand up. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 through 4 and verse 9, here it is. And it reads, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time shall thy people, thy people shall be Delivered. Everyone that shall shall be found written where? In the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall what? Awake. Some to what? Everlasting life. And some to what? Shame and everlasting contempt. So you see though, you see the, the resurrection. Everybody's going to be resurrected. Frankly, it's just whether it's going to be a thousand year difference between them. Right? Those who are Christ, right? At, at his his uh, appearance, that's what we call the rapture. And then you have those on the back end of the kingdom, rising, coming up out of their graves. All those who were dead without Christ or dead without the law, those who are going before the what? Great white throne judgment. So everybody's going to be resurrected. That's not a question. The question is how? Will you be resurrected what? To everlasting life. Are you coming up in shame and everlasting contempt? Because the next place we go from that white throne judgment is to the lake of fire. Eternally separated from God. Somebody say, run into Jesus. He's the answer. He's the answer. So. So now, verse 3, and they that be wise shall do what? Shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the what? Stars forever and ever. There's people who want to be a star now. Who wants to be a star? He says, you can shine like a star what? Forever and forever if you turn many to what? Righteousness. To living right, to doing right. And the righteousness is in Christ. So you turn them to Jesus, and then they have righteousness. It's imputed to them. Not according to their sins and their own works. Because no man can do it but Jesus. All right? But this is verse 4, and he says, But thou, O Daniel, do what? Shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and what? Knowledge shall be increase. Do you see that? Daniel do what? Shut up the book. I've started to talk to you 
in your prayer to me about something that's going on in your time because you read that 70 years were determined upon your people. And so you're trying to see when are we coming out of this bondage? That's what you want to know. And I have thoughts that I've thought towards you and, and if peace is not evil to bring it to an expected end. So I know how long your bondage is going to be, your captivity is going to be. And I send word to you, but you didn't know all you were about to get. And see, when I started speaking to you, that, that's a love. See, that's, that's a love God has. If you look at his life, Daniel's life, and how he lived, how he honored God, how he honored him in prayer, that what got caught, got him thrown in what? The lion's den, evil men who, who sought out to, to, to kill him. He had favor. Now he gets thrown in, and, and the king has made a decree, can't take it back. And now he says, Daniel, was your, was your God able to save you? Oh, king, what? Live forever. See that? Yes, his God was able to do so. And those same people who set traps for you are the same ones going to be thrown to the same line in the same trap that they set for you in this hour. Hallelujah, somebody. So our God is able. But his lifestyle was such that God was able to come and speak to him and tell him something about that would take thousands of years to even come to pass and are still yet to come. So God is able to give you more than enough, not just what you're asking for, but more than enough. And that's another story. But he says, even, he says, shut up the book even to the time of the end. And I posit to you that the time of the end, it was reopened in John, in the revelation of Jesus Christ to John. When he was stranded on the Isle of Patmos, it was reopened. And the time of the end began right then. So these are, look at verse 9. He says, many shall run to and fro. Look at how we're interconnected. We can fly, change our weather, change the weather forecast by flying in the same day. More convenient place. We are the information, we are in the information age where it's multiplied so much that we have more access to knowledge than any other generation. And so we can see that we are, clearly we are living in the what? End times. Look at verse 9. What time is it? He says, and he said, do what? Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are what? Closed up and sealed till the time of the end. And these are the time of the end. This is the time of the end. Amen. Shema. The Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And thou shalt love thy neighbor. Amen. Blessings on you. Now, we're going into and unraveling the things of the new world order or the one world system. And what I'll say as a preface to it is that these things uh, are not sermonic. They are prophetic. And being such, it causes that the people who hear, uh, you have to come out of the place where you were to the place where you're going, right? So there are certain things we've become comfortable with that we have become accustomed to in this church world in the 21st century. In the 20th and the 21st century, we've become accustomed to AC. We've become accustomed to lights. We've become accustomed to uh, the accoutrements that we have, uh, this, this this PA system that's able to amplify my voice. We've become accustomed to it. We've been accustomed to a hum. Hey, mm -hmm. all right. You know, we become accustomed to certain things that, that make us feel good down in our sanctified soul. However, uh, many times they are just tradition. Many times they are vain traditions. And there are things that spoil you so much that you cannot even hear God. How do I know it? Because after 30 minutes, there are some who've already logged off, right? Because 30 minutes is their time. That's the time that their pastor preaches. 30 minutes and I'm out. But most of the New Testament was written by Paul. And Paul himself, when he preached, the Bible says he don't preach for a short period of time. He preached for hours, late into the night. So much so, the boy was sitting in the window 
fell out the window, fell asleep, fell out the window, and fell out dead now. Oh, Lord, I'm preaching Jesus all this time, talking about his power and everything else, and I just born to fall out the window and die. What did Paul do? Go down, lay upon him, and what? The spirit of life come back, what? Into that boy. So what, what am I saying? That there, in the revelation of Jesus Christ, there is not uh, 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 a, there's no space for flesh. Right? And so if flesh hasn't been crucified, it can't hear this no way. You're already doomed. If your flesh is going to lead you in this hour, you're already doomed. And that doesn't mean that you won't make the kingdom. I wouldn't go that far. I, hello. But I wouldn't be so sure about that salvation that don't, according to the Bible, crucify his flesh or deny themselves, take up a cross and follow me. When you only have time to be in God's presence for what? 25 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, two hours, and you, you got to go. It means you don't have a prayer life that lasts what? Your, your prayer don't last 30 minutes. It means you ain't in the presence of God too long anyhow. So you're on the periphery of what I call salvation. I'm talking about those who come to the cross who are ignorant. They, they learn about Jesus and they learn about, you know, Mary had a little lamb and, and things like that, but they don't go into the deeper things of God. They still desire, have the desire to sincere milk of the work that they may grow thereby. They've grown old in the church but haven't grown up in the church. And so I have to view this as a preamble because many people have already tuned out, not knowing that this is your life. This is not just your life, this is your family's life. Not just your family's life, but your loved ones, your friends, your co-workers. This is their life. This new world order, this one world system that is about to come into play will bring to pass what I just read into your ears from Daniel. And the other things that John was able to open back up by Jesus coming to him and breaking the revelation. And so what it tells you first is that these words didn't come by a pastor. These words didn't come by just a teacher. These words came by prophets and apostles, which are the foundation of the church. Jesus Christ being a chief cornerstone. So if you try to build on anything else, he says, be careful how you build on that foundation. Because when he comes and lays the plumb line and you do not line up, with the word of the apostles and the prophet. Then your building now gets burned up. Everything you build on it gets burned up. Wood, hay, silver, gold, stubble, whatever you put on it. But many people are trying to build with stubble right now. When hurricane force winds are coming, category five, it won't withstand it. And so what happens? You cut the head off the church and there's no apostle, no prophet, no eyes to see, diagnose what's going on in the body, no mouthpiece to speak as God has said, no prophets. See, that, there's a difference between Moses, right? Moses was an apostle. If we put it in that way, he was an apostle. Why in Numbers chapter 12, when Moses had, had, a, had an issue, he married someone that everybody else didn't want him to. They got upset. And the way, they the way they justified it, he got the Ethiopian woman. And, and, and the way they justified it, they said, well, hey, God speak to us too. God talked to me too. Yes, God does talk to me. God talks to me as well. But I know what God's called me for. I know the place he's called me in. So I stay in my place. See, as a pastor, I'm a shepherd. I, I'm, a, I'm a priest. I intercede for people with God and I take care of people. So my heart is to the people. And sometimes your heart can be so much for the people that you'll be trying to protect them by covering them when you can't, when it goes beyond your authority to do so. When God has pronounced judgment and you still uh, trying to give words of comfort. See, Moses and Aaron and Miriam because they're family members, sometimes people get a little bit too common, not recognizing God has chosen who he's chosen. So he said, God speaks to us too. And so God called them to the tent, tent of meeting, called them to the, the place of tabernacle, and told them, he says, I, I heard you talking. Now, now, now uh, if there be a prophet among you, I speak to him in dreams and visions, similitudes, things of that nature. 
but my servant Moses is not. For I speak to him apparent, even what? Mouth to mouth. God is speaking to some people what? Mouth to mouth. He said he showed Israel his acts, but he showed Moses his what? Ways. I show you what I call, uh, uh, I show you the the sum of who I am. There was Moses trying to see see God. So I can't see, you can't see me. You'll die if I, if I show you to, to, to your flesh, but I'll let you see my hind parts. I'll let you see my heart. That's what he's saying. I'll take and put you in the cleft of the rock, in the cleft into my heart, and I'll let you see me that way. So he was able to see God in that way. That's the difference between an apostle and an apostle. So he's a sent one, sent to do a job, sent. Like a, unto a missionary, sent to do a job. A pastor's pastor. So there's a difference. Then you have prophets. Prophets, God is able to deal with in visions and dreams. They're the mouthpiece of God. They speak as God said. They don't have a necessarily a heart for the people. They got a heart to say exactly what God said, and that's it. And so it doesn't come with the care and the comfort that a pastor gives. That's the reason why when the prophet's gone, the pastor, the pastor teacher has to give people understanding and, let, and put everything in context. As well as the pastor, the shepherd, or under shepherd, because Jesus is our chief shepherd, has to be the one who is able to take the people and say, no, this is not for your diet. We can't let that prophet come and speak to you because, not because he's not going to speak the word of the Lord, because when he speaks the word of the Lord, he's doing it for money. He has the wrong spirit. He'll come deposit the wrong spirit in here. He'll come and try to take advantage of you, get into your pockets, and start to have back channel conversations with you that were not, uh, were not, uh, it had no informed consent from the person who is the leader. So use it as a, as a tool to come in, get you on their social media, and then now you'll be listening to them and, and worrying, wondering, pastors wondering, how you get another word from what God is saying? Because God is giving sheep for a shepherd. He said, my sheep hear my voice, another they won't want to, they won't go after. You're not going to follow that. And in this hour, because information has increased and knowledge, knowledge has increased and people running to and fro, that it's so easy now to just log off and log in to somebody else. And so you get ruined by eating off of everybody's table. And you say, well, I, I just eat the meat and spit out the bones. Well, it's difficult to eat the meat and spit out the bones when people are giving false doctrine. It's like cyanide inside a Kool-Aid. It tastes good, but you can't separate it from the, from the, from the poison. Particularly babes. You're going to give a babe, uh, 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 you know, give them whiting with all them bones and think they're going to be able to pick through it? No. See, when you become more mature, you ain't running after every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You're worrying about serving where God has planted you at. So many people don't have a pastor, and they're unruly, and they're, I don't know why I'm going here, but they're unruly, and they're refusing to be in subjection to God's divine order. He has set in his house a divine order. Just like the government has an order, God's government has an order. There's nothing out of place in the heavenlies, and it won't be in the earth either. Okay, how many denominations we have, how many reformations we have, how many madhouses we have when people get mad and go and start up another church. That God ain't ordained, nobody's been vetted. Just because they sound like they got an anointing. We so anointed. No, he's just gifted. It's without calling all gifts and calls without what? Repentance. I don't take it back because he gave it. They're just misusing the gift. And you over there under that mess. Oh well. I'll stop there. Just know this that for those who believe God has cut off prophets and apostles from the church. See, we, we have different terminology. We have different terminology, right? So, so God can give a revelation. He revealed something to me that was hidden. But the revelation is not uh, on par with the revelation of God through Jesus Christ in the Bible because the canon has been closed, right? And so everything that comes afterwards has to line up with the word of God. Right? It becomes the rule of faith. It becomes the, the, the one place you can go to and you know that this is sound doctrine. Everything comes out of his is sound doctrine. So when people come to you with another word, he says, if anybody come to you 
an uh, angel or a man come to you with another gospel other than I've already given you, let him be what? A curse. Not only did he say let him be a curse, he said let him be a curse, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. He said, he said let the judgment begin now. That joker don't have no way to get in. But we see we deliver people's bodies to Satan so that we can deliver their souls. Hallelujah. God has given prophets and apostles even in this hour. It would be uh, it would be a disservice if every generation has God has spoken to through his prophets. He's spoken through his son in these last times. He says God who in, in such a time spoke to, 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 to his people by the prophets has now in these last days spoken to us by his son. But where's his son? Where's the son? That same son is now in the body, the body of Christ. We are representative of him in the earth. And you mean he don't have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, according to Ephesians chapter 4, to bring us to the unity of faith? If we haven't come there yet, if we're still being tossed to and fro, if we're still carried away with every doctrine and, and with cunning craft and whereby men lay on weight to deceit, and we haven't grown speaking the truth and love, if we haven't come to that place yet, God is still ordained for his apostles and prophets to be in the earth. And I'll show you how. I'll show you how. In, in his Olivet Discourse, Matthew 24, when he told them the first sign of his coming, his, his coming to set up his kingdom, time of the end, the first thing the Lord told them, his disciples, was there would be a spirit of deception. He says, be not deceived. Many will come in my name saying, lo, here is Christ and there is Christ. False prophets, false Christ will arise. So how can false prophets arise if there are no what? True ones. I can just forget everybody who calls himself a prophet. If that be the case. Even in, 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 in the revelation of John, he says that, that I have someone against you. He said, I like this thing about you. You tried those who said they were what? Apostles and found that they what? Were not. So what? That just stopped? God not speaking anymore? People are crazy. People are blind. You have pastors who are blind who have gotten dumb because they follow their spirit and not the spirit of the living God. They don't have a revelation of Jesus Christ in them. That's through the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, the Paraclete, who he says, I'm going to send him, that he's going to talk to you, and everything I say, he's going to repeat because he's not going to speak of his own self. He's going to speak of me. And that's what the Holy Ghost is about. But when I tell you that you just got the Holy Ghost, as soon as you, you say, I, I received Jesus, I give the right hand of fellowship, you got the Holy Ghost, then what? that's why people are weak, are weak in the faith. Because they've been taught damnable doctrines. There's something wrong with you coming and praying on the altar and calling on the name of Jesus. He said, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Well, that's how I got my deliverance. I don't know about anybody else. Praise the Lord. The new world order, one world system. The reason why I say that is because I don't fancy myself to be a prophet. I don't call myself that. But the Lord had determined, predetermined for my life that he would put me in contact with one who would be one. And that's my father in the gospel. He said, you have many instructors, but, but one, not many fathers. And so I have a father in the gospel who is a prophet, an end time prophet, the true apostle. He's been preaching the same word for over 50 years and hasn't had to change it. God has established every single one of the words that he has spoken. And I thank God for it. So that ain't because he's so great. It's only because he's connected to the one who is great. It's Jesus. He's still talking by his spirit. He's still ordaining those to be mouthpiece for him. And I bless God that, that when John was locked up in prison, he sent his disciples say, are you the one that should come, or should we wait for another? I ain't seen you in so long. You went in 40 days. You've been gone, you know. And, and now here it is. I'm, I'm still preaching this good, good stuff, telling people to repent. And now I'm here, and they want my head. Go and find out whether this is the same, the same fella. Well, his disciples go to Jesus. Jesus say, come follow me for a while. Then when they... God finished Jesus saying, now go back to John. Tell him that the blind eyes are open. 
the deaf hear, the dumb speak, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Do you see all those miracles? And, and, and so here it is. He has accounted the gospel being preached to the poor to be a miracle because who cares about poor people? But thanks be to God that God sent someone when I was yet poor and thought enough of me, pitied my old soul, that he would preach the gospel to me that I might have right to the tree of life. So that same scripture said, and blessed are those who are not offended in me. Not offended when things are looking bad on your end and things are looking good on mine. Right. See that? He must I must decrease that he may what? Increase. So I thank God for putting me in the ministry of apostles and prophets. Where where I I don't have to question whether or not a word is a, a person is of God, from God. And if home their gift made full proof of their ministry. Done the work of an evangelist, done the work of a prophet, done the work of an apostle. See? But if you're in the congregation of church, you haven't been haven't been exposed to that. All you have is the pastor. But pastors are like the womb of the church. I gotta say this: I, I, the pastors are the womb of the church, and there are gifts within us that are sometimes I'll say greater than our own. And what tends to happen is jealousy arises when you start to see gifts that are different or greater than your own. And what happens is pastors are committing spiritual abortions in the body of Christ, in the house of God. They're cutting off everything that looks different from them, not knowing that it's a prophet, but if you don't believe in prophets, you won't, that person get a vision, get a dream, and you don't even want to entertain it. And if your pastor's doing it to you, you need to pray to God that he will send you exactly where you should go, or that he'll open your pastor's eyes, one or the other. You need to be planted in the full body ministry, the full body of Christ. It's a whole five or fourfold ministry, however you call it, and, and, and the ministry of the government. First Corinthians chapter 12, you have the full body of Christ and members in particular. All right. You have to get that right first because there are people who, who, who always shut you off before they even know that, hey, God is still speaking. God is still telling us what's going on. And I have a litany of, of, of examples of God speaking to our spirit, revealing to us those things that are coming, illuminating his revelation out of the word of God. And so many people, that's why I say it, there's different terminology. Illumination, God doesn't reveal anything else outside of the Bible or at that level. And so now you are illuminated to what's going on in the word of God. Well, let's illuminate the eyes of your understanding now. We are unraveling the things of the end, the new world order, the one world system. So, if I'm able to travel the distance, you'll understand the warfare. And the good part about this is I had already covered part of this. In previous messages, I covered this in the Rise of the Pale Horse or Behold the Pale Horse. I believe that's the third installment of this series. So what you will quickly realize is when we get to Revelation 13, that is a parallel to what's happening in Revelation chapter 6. All right? So as we travel, you'll understand all these things that are occurring and that the Chinese dragon has set the stage for world dominance. And that world dominance was conceived this year, 2020.
Father, thank you. The things that come in the earth, those things that are already in heaven. Find the willing hand of the enemy now. And this device to not open the eyes of your little ones that you may hear. See and understand. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, put your hands together for Jesus. So there are things coming to play in the earth, coming to hand in the earth, and that are already at play right now. It's been a secret held back. But the Lord reveals his secrets, according to Amos chapter 3. The Lord would do nothing except he first reveal his secrets to the servants and the prophets. And makes things known to the body of Christ that should be. So what we're going to talk about a little bit is this Chinese One Belt, One Road initiative. One Belt. Somebody say one belt, one row initiative. And what it does, it connects China with the world. Of course, I told you to go back to Behold the Pale Horse. I think that's part three of this series. On YouTube or Facebook Live, Facebook, you'll be able to, to, to look at the particulars about this and how the Pale horse is riding. Pale horse being Red China and its Asian counterparts and those that are in treaty and league with them. So China is leading the effort to create the world's largest economic platform. So you would have to read carefully as you did responsibly today so that you can see the Bible is being fulfilled right now in 2020 and moving forward. Details that Daniel could not declare was shut down to the time of the end. Now the Lord by his messengers makes these things known unto you. More than 2,000 years ago, China's imperial envoy, Zhang Quan, Times of Christ, he helped to establish the Silk Road. Somebody say Silk Road. It was a network of trade routes that linked China to Central Asia and to the Arab world, which meant all nations except Israel were under Rome. So the name came from one of the most important imports of China, Silk. So why connect Central Asia and the Arab world? It was for silk, right? So when we travel, when we go into these markets, that's what we look for. Silk, the carpets, all of that from pure virgin silk. Well, coming into the 21st century, China's president, Xi Jinping, proposed establishing a modern equivalent to the Silk Road of 2,000 years ago. The proposal began, was implemented beginning in 2013. But this time, the Silk Road that was at the times of Jesus Christ won't be. It won't be camels and horses, but railways and roads. In those days when there were was no electrical power. The olive and the tree bearing oil was most important for the sustenance of the people. As a part of the new Silk Road, we're seeing the advent of pipelines. So all of what I told you earlier about pipelines, about interconnectedness in America, they're coming down out of Canada all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Although they're connected, but they're not said to be connected to the link, the plan that will link China to Central Asia. 
to West Asia and other parts of South Asia. So, so this initiative, the One Belt, One Road initiative, you will see in the future and you will continue to hear of because it aims to create the world's largest platform for economic cooperation, for policy coordination, for trade and financing collaboration, for social and cultural collaboration and cooperation. It is the reason why you are seeing Confucius Institutes that are popping up in major universities in America. And not just in our post-secondary schools, but also in elementary and secondary, and then those college-level courses and student atmospheres. It's an integration of social and cultural ideas. So the council's authorized a plan to move forward from now with the Silk Road Economic Belt. The 21st century Silk Road will not just be on land or pipelines under land, but they are all now already situating themselves for a 21st century maritime Silk Road. So where are we now? We're talking about being connected by water. Bless you, Jesus. Three routes are set to connect China to Europe by way of Asia. The Persian Gulf, the Mediterranean through West Asia, and the Indian Ocean by way of South Asia. The 21st century Maritime Silk Road is planned to create connections among regional waterways. More than 60 countries with a combined GDP of over $21 trillion have already signed on secretly to the project. And that's quite a bit of money. That's a little bit less than what our current national debt is in America. So shipping exchanges are already being developed in China internally, developing an ultra-modern nation so as to pull in goods globally from all of Asia, from Africa, and from Europe, including Western Europe. They will be able having it there to store it, to reset it, and to sell it back to the Western nations of the world at a profit. So there'll be six major economic corridors. One is the New Eurasian Land Bridge. The second is the China-Mongolian-Russia route. The third is the China Central Asia Western Asia route. And the fourth is the Indo China Peninsula. They've already signed treaties with Pakistan with the intent to, set, to, to, to develop a silk road between China and Pakistan. That's number five. And number six, between Bangladesh, China, India, and My Myanmar. All of these corridors will be the sites of energy and industrial clusters and will be created through the use of railroads, highways, roads, waterways, air pipelines, air pipelines and information highways. So we are talking about cyberspace now. So everybody all right? We'll tie it all together for the viewing public. They say we wish to give you full play to the cooperative advantages of each country and promote everybody's growth. So what does that look like? That looks like the body of Christ. The body of Christ, where we're fitly joined together, every joint supplying that which the other needs, it makes a fullness. We all increase. So we, we become greater. The, the sum of our parts together is greater than them individually disconnected. And so that's the that's the pitch to other nations. But the growth is predominantly, predominantly occurring among the third world countries. So where are the funds coming from? The West. That's where it's coming from. Somebody say the West. By vision, we look at the development of the new world order because if there is a one world system, there has to be a control mechanism. So the Chinese government is already redirecting its capital abroad, including the United States. 
United States policymakers ought to be watching. But because the poly, poly, policymakers in our country, as you can tell with this CARES Act, right? Let me park that right there. With this CARES Act, we just had a bailout stimulus plan for those who were put out of work for these months due to the pandemic. You have $2.3 trillion. A quarter of that, maybe, goes towards small businesses. But small businesses aren't what we think they are because those provisions are changed that allow for huge corporations, hotels and restaurants, those who are making millions of dollars to suck up all the money before the small businesses can even get to the trough. So they say, oh, don't worry about it. We're going to have more. We're going to get another plan, come out and throw some more money out. They give to the individuals who are not business owners the majority of Americans, $1,200 with different caveats there that may not even make it to you. And if it does, it'll probably make it to you by September when the Lord has already said that this thing won't end until the Feast of Trumpets. So you see how your government operates. A few years back, there was a Tea Party wave that came in that said, we're not going to increase our deficit and we're not going to increase the national debt. We're going to balance our spending, balance our budget. And if, if you don't agree to do so, President Obama, then what we're going to do is shut down the whole government. We're not going to allow for what we call a spending bill. What we call to raise the national debt. Because to do so, you have to do it in advance. And say, Okay, we agreed to allow for us to borrow this more money to increase our national debt. And so the Tea Party rolled that wave. The conservatives rolled that wave so hard. And what was President Obama, the black horse, in there doing from Revelation 6? What was he doing? Holding the balance, trying to work that thing out, making deals. Right? And so now those same conservatives are nowhere to be found. When the coffers of the American public are now used as a piggy bank for all the rich. And the poor get the scraps, if that. So many people have already been chosen to be losers. You have to understand this is why I said you cannot rely on the government to do it for you. You rely on the government to do it for you and operate in your best interest, you will be men most miserable. So I said that the, the American government should be watching how China is moving. But because the policymakers are the millionaires here, and they're the billionaires here, it matters little to them if it represents money coming where? Into their own pockets. So what they don't realize is that when you sell the industry, when you sell the agricultural production mechanism, if you make a billion, if you make 20 billion, how many get it? Once you sold, you have nothing else to sell. And from then on, you become consumers from the country that bought your stuff. Anybody remember when we started shipping manufacturing of our auto plants and everything else? Shipping it all, all the way off seas to China. Why? Because they are able to pay, get slave labor. It's the same way they built the country off of, off of the backs of, of Africans stolen from the slave, stolen from Western Africa. Brought here and built this country. Same people who are still oppressed now. And so we talked about America's judgment last week. America's downward spiral last week in part four. You can go and listen to that as well, if you will. So, you sell off your product, and now you are left with nothing, no assets. So if anybody understands me, if the world stays around 100 years, another 100 years, where are we now? We're in 20 what? 2020. Say, say if, the, if the world stays around as it is till, what, what, what would it be? It would be 20, 
120, right? 100 years, right? If it stays around that long. America will be where China was 100 years ago. Do you understand that China was what was, was a laughing stock? They were impoverished third world country with all these people who were living in poverty. That's where they were. So they put their mind to work, they put their ingenuity to work. They were backed by the dragon, I told you, which is the fallen one, Prince of the Power of the Air, who is orchestrating this plan that is part of the pale horse that death and hell follows in, in its tail. They will kill the fourth of the part of, of the earth. But also, it is the same thing that ushers in this one world system and the new world order that comes after it. Because the world order as it is now, with America being at the top of it, was established in World War II. Post-World War II declaration, the Balfour Declaration, the, the uh, Annunciation of Israel as an Independent Sovereign Nation, 1948. All those things came about from American ingenuity, from the greatest generation in the earth, in the world. They are now dying, baby boomers, dying of now, not just old age, but also COVID-19. So those who know what it means to sacrifice to build a nation no longer be around. And all you have is people who have known nothing but consuming, haven't known of building anything, only known of consuming it on themselves. Selfish, narcissistic generation. But out of that generation will come the greatest in the world. God had determined that in this generation that it will be the greatest people of faith will, will come out of this generation. Because these are those that he says, those that know their God shall be strong and shall do what? Great exploits. All right? So, the whole nation will be broke and poor and dependent on foreign goods to survive. They've already dealt with Singapore. Singapore, that's $22 billion that they had. Call on. So they entered into an agreement to where this essentially becomes a debt that you can use to build up your infrastructure. So you take that debt to build up your infrastructure, but what happens when you're unable to pay it back? What happens when those children who, who are growing up, those people who have paid into their systems over the years, and now they get old enough to draw from their, their system? They realize that that mama did a reverse mortgage and that their country has done a reverse mortgage on their well-being. And now the fruits of their land are now going to someone who is not invading with a with, with, with an army and a tank, but they're invading economically through a bad agreement that people who are so short-term in their thinking on consumption will find themselves dying later. So you just prolong that happening. So Chinese companies have begun now with the money that they are extracting from nations around the earth to build roads and bridges and tunnels across Central Asia. Trade between China and Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan just in the last few years has totaled over $50 billion. And those are nations that are right outside of their borders. So what you have to see is that they were once great traders with Russia because of their own European edge of the borders. So Russia cannot compete, neither can it resist because it's already joined what? BRICS. What did we tell you BRICS was? Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South America. Right? This economic conglomerate. <clears throat> 
So, so China has made sure from the get go before doing any of this that the nations on every continent are already locked under its supervision. So Chinese companies now own close to a quarter of of uh, Kazakhstan's oil production because China needs oil. What happens when when demand goes down with a pandemic? What happens when Russia jumps online and says uh, with the pipeline is being built from them, from that Russia-China area pipeline being built uh, along that line? Now that natural gas is able to be provided by Russia instead of Kazakhstan, who has less position because they gave they they were doing business only with one one uh with, with one uh, exporter. They only have one per one country to do business with. So what happens when Russia comes in has more reserves and they're able to take over the business? The the country goes down because they're not able to sell their natural gas, but. You still have China inside of your backyard through their companies. These companies are owners. This is a communist nation. It does capitalism, but it does it through uh, their communist methods. And so though their their private companies are really publicly owned or directed. You see what I mean? So when when I say China, I'm not necessarily saying it's the country that's doing it, but it is based on their private companies who are in those areas. So China is going global with its expertise in high speed. Real construction already. Not even hitting the news. They have constructed over 15,000 miles of track, high speed rail. China has more high speed rail than the rest of the world all combined, connecting China already with over one half of Southeast Asia. South America, just south of us, already receiving Chinese funding. Xi Jinping has pledged some $250 billion over the next decade. Uh, by 2027 to span into the Brazilian rainforest, but it's making its first advent into Peru. <clears throat> and the reason being because the borders are right there on Pacific Ocean. So China does not have to cross a nation to get a permit to cross the Pacific Ocean because it is its natural border. And if that's not ambitious enough, <laughs> with the signing of the contract, a few years back, they dropped another $50 billion into the Panama Canal and have plans while controlling that canal to build a second canal through Nicaragua, 170 miles long. Now, why is that going to be so easy? Because you already know, in Nicaragua, El Salvador, the countries are already messed up. Governments are messed up. People are shooting each other. Cops own drugs. Dope addicts are killing folks, women being raped, children being sold as sex slaves. China is able to stay out of the politics and says what? I'll build you some hospitals. I'll build you some roads, infrastructure. But where they are, are, where are they getting their guns from? They're getting them from us. So the world is beginning to see that the West is giving us what? Guns to kill ourselves. And it looks like China is trying to help us out. Do you understand the Bible? It is bringing the scriptures to pass. When they cry peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction comes upon them. In other words, this is war strategy. You don't see it that way because you don't see any guns being lifted. We see business meetings. We see sit-downs in the Oval Office, in presidential offices. We see handshakes in the Rose Garden. So you need to know that China, when it comes to America, is not coming to America to meet with the political leaders necessarily. They find themselves in California, in Silicon Valley, and up to San Francisco with Boeing. So they make contracts that you see come to play because China has plans to spend to build a high-speed railway in California financed by the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Somebody say AIIB. So $46 billion going to Pakistan. to run under sanctions because of the United States. Got it? So people are suffering not because they are poor, but because their oil reserves cannot be exported. That's what happens when we lock down sanctions. 
You still have the power to do so. Now China comes, builds a pipeline, doing business directly with Iran, with Russian support, and America can't do anything about it. Are you all with me? But who is in Iran from the beginning? Mr. BP. Also owns about 20% of Russian petroleum company. This is all happening right now under our noses. As the world continues to go, those things that are most pressing before your face continue to go. These are the things that are shaping what your tomorrow that will be before your face is. It is the reason why it is important. So the Chinese propensity to use their own labor force in foreign countries has prompted a lot of complaints. Even when we were going to the Caribbean, this is what's happening, a lot of complaints. We have people in this ministry who, who, who will report to us how they've come in and, and, and the governments against the warnings from the prophet have sold out. Private uh, businesses and private owners have sold out to these Asian companies, and now the Asians are coming in, and they're taking up the jobs. And what happens to the natives? They're left poor and without jobs. So the Chinese propensity to use their own labor force in foreign company, all in foreign countries, is prompted a lot, a lot of complaints. But the people are so happy they can work instead of shooting each other that they are giving in to it. You all getting that? So if I agree to build a paved road that comes in through here, and I bring my own people in to build it, you don't have to do anything but just give us some water. Right? So you're not getting it. So <clears throat> that wasn't free. That was draining my lake. That was draining my water well. You all have that? And so. It's good when we see the roads going up, but when the road is done and they pull out and we turn on the tap and there's no water, we suddenly realize that we've been gypped. We've been duped. Are you understanding? So what looked like peace ended up turning out to be what? Sudden destruction. As the Bible declared. So the Lord has shown us this competition. You're seeing a rising China is going to happen. Most likely, most of the time that we sit and we discuss these things, prophetically, you're going to hear us talk about China. There's no other way. They are the pale horse. They are being backed by the dragon, bringing about dragon dominance. So you're going to have to survive this. Everybody out there is going to have to survive this because this being in your mind, you may not remember everything I say, but you'll have enough so that when things happen that are extraordinary, your spirit man will catch it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The ultimate goal of the one world system is to produce a one world order. One world order. And so what you have to do is look at the pyramid. We're looking at the queen in the eye of the pyramid. We're looking at the crown council of the 13, the committee of the 300, powerful family, powerful subfamilies, the round table, the world financial entities, world resource control, and down below that, you come to robotics with world population control, world resource control. You hear what I'm saying? Labor units, so that within the next two presidential elections, it will come to pass, I'm sorry, by the end of the next presidential cycle, that'll be 20 what, 2024? It will come to pass that only in America or in Mexico or in parts of Europe that human beings will be substituted by robots. And we are not substituted by robots. 
and allowed to work, robots will dictate your actions. Ask anybody who works over at the plant, uh, uh, the new plants, Amazon. Ask anybody who works there. You will see how this works. When you bring AI, artificial intelligence, robotics, biometrics, biotechnics, you bring all those techniques together to form a very strong, powerful system for population control. So I control how you work. I control, I can, I can see how often you, you, you leave to take a break. I can see what your production pattern has been to see how, uh, what's the word? To, to see how, how, uh, so, yeah, the proficient you're being in your working. And what you always find is that robots are able to be much more proficient than human beings. Because human beings have a propensity, particularly those in countries where they have been allowed or endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, among those of life, liberty, and the free pursuit of happiness. They want to pursue their happiness on your job and get a paycheck while not pursuing production. You see, you hear what I'm saying? So it's beginning real gently with Alexa in your house, turning on the lights, reminding you when you have appointments, telling you when you pay have to pay the bills. Alexa plays the Star Spangled Banner, and Alexa plays the whatever. And it all seems like fun. But that's too much information in virtual reality. That's too much information in cyberspace that you lose control over about yourself. So when they button down the hatch, all of the common labor, medical labor, schools, agriculture, normal taxation, retirement cycle controls, welfare, everything that controls the life of common people will be under the control of artificial intelligence. Are you all with me? But with the present capacity of unknown persons to use AI or artificial intelligence to manipulate the, the nations, then those people in the pyramid in the West with the solid gold of Great Britain will begin to lose its power because it can't see where its money is going. And what the people believe is not what it is. But all you have to believe is what they tell you, right? What I'm talking about now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about media. Don't you realize already that CBS, NBC, Fox, MSNBC, they're all part of the same octopus. The same family of networks designed to spit out different perspectives coming from the same head. The resistant, low-income, working-class people are going to be systematically controlled or replaced by robotics with artificial intelligence, and they don't even have feelings. So what are we coming to when we get to virtuality, with China being the only nation on earth debt free? Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Then the IMF becomes directly a competitor with AIIB, with the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank and the banks of China. So China is getting free market access now so that in the days when it, this does come to pass, by 2025, she will already be at the top. They have already become the world's top economic force. America, at the turn of 2017, fell in se second place. It's right after our 2016 elections, right? And being in the second place is only politics because America is over $20 trillion in debt. Part, most of its foreign debt is to China, then Japan. And others, and of course, we own ourselves internally. Those are bought bonds and, and stock certificates inside, inside uh, treasury notes inside of the country. Those investment banks, your employers and corporations that have invested in the markets. So China is in debt to no one, though. So China is letting you all play the second place until you take it too far. And then you have to pay the poverty. Your banks, 
Chase Manhattan, Sax, City, all notes. Those notes now under the domain of the Chinese government. Mr. Smiling, <laughs> Xi Jinping. And we're headed into a place where there will be one world leader. Go into your Bibles now. Revelations chapter 13. Revelations 13, verse 7. Thank God for those who are able to bear this. Those out there online who are not used to this type of exposition. Revelation 13, verse 7. We have to say amen. And it reads, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Saying with you things that are needed to survive. One world leader. And what does it say? He made war with the saints because he had no other competition. You see what everything I just told you before about the One Belt, One Road initiative, interconnecting everything so that economically you can continue to have the ability to not just have everybody in league treaties with you, if I'm in treaty with you economically, I'm less likely to go to war with you because we have what we call a symbiotic relationship. We have mutually beneficial terms that I benefit from you existing and you benefit from my, from my existence. So I don't want to break that down economically. So economics will keep people from going to war when they otherwise have a problem or we'll find another solution for it. And that's what, what I'm saying. But those inter interconnected highways where people and goods are able to move back and forth without breakage. So if you can take production, if you can take shipping routes, ship, shipping routes, and go from uh, a 30-day uh, uh, process, where it takes 30 days for you to get from point A to point B, and break that down by a third, and make that 10-day period, do you know how much more efficient you get? Do you know how much how much more uh, how much less uh, uh, you, you would have to pay for production? It, it it costs less to do business amongst yourself. And if I decide who the Commonwealth is, if I lay the tracks down, if I have the legal agreements with other countries, see, legal agreements with countries are like this. If anybody understands treaties, it's the only thing in constitutional law, it's the only thing that overrides the Constitution, is if the country enters into treaties with other nations. So it's able to override even the Constitution of the United States of America because we made an agreement. We make an agreement to pay, we have to pay. And that's what happens when Nations go bankrupt, like Greece did a few years ago. And what happens? People from America rush to Greece to go and have fun. Why? Because their, their dollar is going to belly up. Their currency is going to belly up, and you can go and buy everything you want for very cheap. Same thing we were doing with China, thinking that we were winning, but we were actually losing because they had a long-term strategy. They weren't just consuming it once they did the production. They, they did the production. And then they double, they double cross, you know, by, by, uh, <laughs> by what we call, uh, currency manipulation and, uh, and, and certainly by pirating, uh, uh, things by, by destroying your ability to utilize your patents. They, they, they did those things and that made it so that they were able to increase wealth even, even faster. All they're doing is mark, all they're doing is marginalizing our wealth so that the wealth of 300 million now comes down while the wealth of the 1.5 billion people goes up. How much? How much? Did, what what it, will it take for 300 million in America to go down? How far would you have to go down in order for them to come up? But it's not just America that they're, they're siphoning from. They're siphoning from everywhere because they have the great demand for all all the stuff for oil and everything else. They, they're 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 trying to connect pipelines everywhere so they can have the oil coming in. And so get what your your uh, what your embargoes and things you put against 
nations like Iran who practice uh, uh, their, their own form of terrorism, by state sponsored terrorism, with the, with the, with the, uh, throwing a rocket high in the hand. Like, forget all that. We want the oil. So we're going to build a pipeline all the way to Iran, and you can't do anything to stop it. Except go to war with us. You want to go with the war with us? We'll call you dead. You want to go to war with us? We've already used your money that we've built up to now build up the South Asian Pacific Sea. The Pacific Sea. So the same places where you were able to go freely into Philippines and into South Korea, Japan, all those nations that since the World War II era you've been able to go freely and, and, and maintain your dominance in. Now we've set up our own bulwark. We set up our own our military there. And, and now you don't want to fight this fight. Because you're not fighting against just me. You're fighting against your, your other enemies that you've had all these years. Our Russian Empire fighting against Iran. So, what are you going to do about it? And then, once you see, the only power you have is in your military to fight. And that costs soldiers to lose their lives. So, what we'll see is a reinstitution of military draft. But you have the pool. In out, out of their, their household, people are not going to want to go to the civil war. Start to see the veneer of of national sovereignty is not is being used as a cover to try to get money. It becomes an old stick, if you will. People start to realize that's what happens, right? One world. No other competition. He has no one else exposing him. What's being preached now, you won't hear this preached on TBN. You won't hear it on the Word Network or any other network. Like that. What's being declared would not be declared in most local assemblies. Because to hear from God, you have to go to God. So we don't come in and Pickle your ears and make up stuff, make you happy, have you saying amen. Instead, we want to hear from God so you can leave out of here having heard from God and knowing that He's going to direct your step. So not only one world leader, but the leader won't be out of China. So for all that China is doing their mass, all that the dragon is doing to pop China up, the pale horse ride, it, it still the, the antichrist still won't come out of China. What did we tell you earlier tonight in the book of Daniel? In reading the scripture, this fellow is what? Jewish background, and he's homosexual. He doesn't like women. You all have, y'all understand what I'm saying? And the dragon is only going to let him go far enough to get the folks together. And after three and a half years, he's coming down. Because even the dragon gets jealous <laughs> of the joke that he's empowered getting all this. Power. Yeah. One world leader, one world government. Revelation 13, uh, uh, verse 2. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Leopard. And his feet were like as the feet of a what? Bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Where did he get his power? And the dragon gave him his what? Power. And he gave him his what? See? And he gave him what? Great authority. Anybody listening? What are the churches preaching about? The Antichrist. Everybody's talking about the Antichrist, the man of sin. Uh, how bad he's going to be. How much stuff he's going to do. But what does the Bible tell us? That the dragon gives him his power. Whatever you see him doing, he's not on his own. It's coming from the dragon who is the devil himself. It's the greatest trick the devil ever pulled. That treating Get in the world to believe that you don't exist at all. Talk about the spiritual world that's more real than even the natural world that we live in. Things that do appear are made from those things that do not appear. Right? Romans 1. Not only will there be one world leader and one world government, but there will be one world religion. Look at verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall what? 
worship him, and whose name was not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Here is a fellow that's so powerful that none in the world will have the power to resist him. And the people trying to survive will have no will to resist him. It's only going to be the saints who know what the end game is that will resist. And these, God says, you have to be so that if it costs you your life, you will never yield yourself to the devil for worship. Even if it means to be able to feed your baby. You see, this is why this pandemic trial run was such a good exercise. This is why it was a good exercise. The reason why it was a good exercise is for this reason. That we have seen that now you have a, a world of people, even in the United States of America, who are willing to, when pressed, violate what even the Word of God says, which is what? To forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as is the what? Custom of others. Now we understand context. Context is this is an issue that for the safety of our people, we ought to do. But what happens when people say, obey those who have rule over you willy nilly, as if that is the only scripture in the Bible? What about when, 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 when you are forced to come out of your house of worship, not for any good reason? Will you have the will to resist? So for all the people that you believe are crazy, if you will, at least they'll stand up for something. I ain't saying it's right when you put people in harm's way. What I'm saying is it has to do with the mentality, being able to discern, the spirit of discernment to see and understand that you cannot just depend on the government to tell you the right thing to do. The disciples went and preached, preached Jesus. They got taken aside and told, y'all don't go preach in that name no more. They get out and go and preach in it again. They get them and say, well, didn't we tell y'all not to preach in that name? They say, well, hey, should we, do we obey God or should we obey you? Well, what am I saying? That when you have two sovereigns, if you will, the sovereign government on earth, terrestrial, and the sovereign God, extraterrestrial, who is able to, Literally, who gave his power to the terrestrial. And God says that his word trumps, no pun intended, the word of the government. And you have to know you have to find yourself in God. Not trying to rationalize why it just makes sense. It just makes sense to do this because it's going to protect us. But at some point in time, it can't be about protection of your life, of your body. He that will lay down his life, for Christ's sake, will pick it up again. See, save your life, you're going to lose it. Don't be afraid of him who can destroy your body. Be afraid of the one who is able to destroy your body and soul both into hell. All that dwell on the earth worship him. So not only one world leader, the one world government, the one world religion, but there's a one world currency. Look at verse 16 through 18. Read. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to, call, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the what? Mark? Or the name of the beast, or the what? Number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath an understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. One world currency. You hear that? Everybody with me so far? So, we're most away, and I'll draw this in after take you all the rest of this later, but we are, if you understand this whole thing, it all has to do with warfare. 
If there's going to be a one world system, if there's going to be a one world order, what they are now calling globalization, got it? Everybody is not going to give up their rights to be subject to one somebody and worship who they say. So while I speak to you about the wars America uh, is, is fighting, wars that France and England fought, and Spain have fought, and the soldiers and troops going to the small nations that, that went to the Middle East to fight this uh, what we call Arab Spring uprising, to deal with the war on terrorism. You have to know that while we are fighting in that way, the country is fighting that way, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, that the dragon has a strategy as well. And it doesn't look like he's fighting because you don't see any cannons and you don't see any bombs dropping. But a strategy is, first of all, to lose the battle, but win the war. So let your boast, if that helps you, let, that's what he'll let you do, boast, if that helps you. But in the end, when it all settles down, the people will inevitably get the best of you. And that's the plan. The plan of Xi Jinping is to visit your countries, to have his people visit your countries, and most of them will, will live in your countries who have been here for years, have been pre-programmed, have been so hypnotized, received their primary educations in Asia. So when they come to Yale, they come to Harvard, they come to other higher-level institutions, they are already pre-programmed to learn what you know, to excel in your educational system, to be honest students, to be serious students while you are playing, they graduate, work in your system for a while to understand how capitalism works, and then get a ticket to go back home and finish the construction of the Chinese society. Here we have all this money, all these schools, all these facilities, 300 million people, and you think that's a lot of folks. Well, China has one and a half billion folks. His strategy, his second strategy, is not to go into open conflict with you, but to know his enemy. That's the second strategy. He wants to know his enemy. His plan is to know his enemy, and the best way to do it is not to appear as an enemy. So you can get in bed with him, and when he's ready to strike, he will overwhelm resistance with speed and sudden activity. When he's ready to strike, he will hit you where it hurts. Not against your head, not with a bullet in the leg, but in your pocketbook. He doesn't have to kill you if you can't eat. Hello, somebody. You can't buy fuel for your car. If you can't pay your house note, if your gas is turned off, if your lights are turned off, or if the bank has no money to lend, are you all hearing what I'm saying? You're talking about being conquered without ever firing a bullet. Hit them where it hurts. That's his instruction already to his people. Defeat them in detail. Expose and attack your opponent softly. And where are you softest? In your faith. Softest in your faith. That's where you're easy. Did you realize that? That's where it's softest. So we call America a Christian society. But are we together? Are we separated in all these denominations? Every church is talking about their other church. The result is your prayer life is compromised. You're so busy that you don't have time to pray. He promised if you pray, he would hear you. And if he hears you, he will answer. So he's still God who heals the sick. Is he so? He's still God who raises the dead. Is he so? He's still God who can cure cancer. Is he so? Who can take away tumors. But we don't pray. We substitute it with medication. Now, I'm not saying anything's wrong with medication or anything's wrong with the doctor. But I'm saying when your faith is displaced, put in the wrong place, it's not in God primarily, first and foremost. 
then you cheat yourself out of a true relationship with God where he's able to hear you and answer you when you call. The first thing about war and succeeding at it is to realize that all warfare is based on deception. Based on deception. Please be the name. Night, you know, eat your the liaison of Dodo, Ohio, one of three mighty men, a the men of Israel, way that those of the Philistines and was weary. And clave to the Lord brought great people returned home. How many, how many get that? I'm talking about what? Military mindset. God gave him the victory because he was consistent. He was consistent and confident that his God was with him. The Bible says here he slayed the enemy until his arm got tired. And by the time he couldn't pick it up anymore, he discovered the enemy had already been destroyed, totally defeated because the Lord was with him that day. You have to grow in wisdom, saints. Pretend to be weak in the presence of your enemy so he can grow arrogant. If he's taking his ease, don't give him any rest. If the enemy's forces are united against you, separate them. God will show you how. You have to attack him where he is unprepared. Appear where you're not expected. And if you get this, what it says to you is in your life and how you live your life, you have to know that you're already marked. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise from God, but you're also marked by the enemy as his enemy. And there are those who are being touched by him to war against you, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your family, it's in your communities. You have to know that and deal wisely, behave wisely when it comes to this. You don't need an instrument of war. You don't need a gun, although I, I, I advise to have a concealed carry permit. All you have to do is show up unexpected, and the God of peace will see you through. Somebody has to decide within themselves that I am not defeated. Somebody has to say, I am not defeated in any circumstance. Somebody has to believe that I am not a victim, but I am the victor through Christ Jesus, my Lord. So whether it's in your business affairs, in whatever you do, you have to believe that God will show up on your behalf. That's the kind of relationship you have to have with God. Because the system as it comes into play. The system, as it comes into play, it will break down and stamp out. It will take the faith out of the church. The enemy is moving already, making it all, all about, all about self and not about God. It's so, the Christology is off. It's, it's not God and Christ centered. It is me centered. All about what I can get for myself. How many are willing to lay down their lives for the Lord? How many are, and I'm not talking about lay down your life, take a bullet. I'm talking about lay down your life, meaning what you choose to do. That you want to live your best life right now. Or you spend your time doing doing meaningless things that steal your time away that you could be spending in getting a closer, deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that you could spend doing good works that will redound to your benefit because he says, when I'm coming back, I'm coming back with my reward is with me to judge every man according to what his work shall be. 
And so your works right now is to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to visit those who are sick and shut in, to take care of those with widows and orphans, to visit those who are in jail and prison, to care about those, the least of these. For as often as you do it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. That's what Jesus will say in that day. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me the drink. When I was in prison, when I was in a uh, sick and shut in, you came and visited me. Understanding this, according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. To the pulling down of strongholds. In order to defeat this one world system, God is able to take us above it so we can live above this one world system with no hindering force able to stop us. We have to learn how to praise our God. Learn how to praise him in every circumstance. Psalms 98 says, sing unto the Lord a new song for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand, his holy arm have gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with a heart, with a harp and with a voice of a song with the trumpets and the sound of a cornet. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the flood clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord. For he cometh to judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the earth and the people with equity. The Lord is in his holy temple. God has not forgotten about his people. Jesus says, you have to count the cost before you go, go off to war. You have to count the cost to see whether you are able to meet the opposition appropriately. If you plan to live for God, plan to use wisdom, And operate in humility, plan to, to pray. No matter what it is that happens amongst you in your life, what we discussed on Wednesday, Romans 8, 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be what? For us, who can be against us? I don't care if the world systems come together against us, a one world system, a new world order, where we're not so privileged to be in the country that runs the whole thing. The one thing we know that we're citizens of a kingdom of a king that does. No matter what it looks like, we know that all power is in his hands. And he's upholding his people and all things by the word of his power. Isaiah 25, 8 says, he will swallow up death and victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all our faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord hath spoken it. And it shall be said in that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Heaven and earth will bear witness that there is one sovereign God and that his way is supreme. And if we discipline ourselves to do it his way, we are always victorious. Do you hear me, saints? We are always victorious. He knows the way of God. He who knows the way of God will be victorious. So no matter what happens, we're able to say, but thanks be to God, would give us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody say that, but thanks be to God, 
which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here, here's your last verse. Here's your last verse. When we are done with this world system, is a preview of a coming attraction. When we're done with this world system, when the Antichrist has been revealed, the man of sin, we know that the Antichrist is here, the one that says that Jesus is not coming to flesh. He said that's the spirit of the Antichrist. It was already there during Paul's day. But when the man of sin comes to take the head of this one world system through his flatteries, when the dragon has done all he's going to do, Satan, that old rascal, when the wars have been fought against Israel, and if you read the scripture tonight, you know that Russia is going to join with the forces of the north and with China, that million man army going in, going down into the land of Israel, the battle that will be at the plain of Je Jehoshaphat, that the devil will sit on the throne and sacrifice swine instead of the lamb. Jews are going to be run out one more time. This time it's going to be to Petra. And it will look like it's all over. But here it is in Revelation 15 and 2. Revelation 15 and 2. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Revelation 15 and 2. Revelation 15 and 2. I want to show you what the end of these things be. Revelation 15 and 2. And it says, And I saw as it were a what? Sea of glass mingled with fire. Mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having harps of God. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is God saying? What is God saying? That when we get through with all of this, when China has done all its plans, when Asia has gained world dominance, when American banks have failed, when Trump, even Obama and Clinton and all the rest of them have failed. When Miss May has failed, when the queen is dead, the saints will survive. Hallelujah. We have hope in Jesus Christ that the victory is ours. Glory be to God. I thank God. I thank God that in one of these old moments, it won't be until these things have come to be. Because he said that first has to be a falling away. We already see that happening in the churches of God now. People are falling away from who once knew God. And have now gone another way. Establishing their own form of righteousness. Saying it don't take all that. But as you can see in the world today, in the revelation of Jesus Christ, it's going to take that and more. Glory be to God. You're going to have to live sanctified, set aside for, according to the master's use, and his alone. you got to live, live holy, holiness unto the Lord. Glory be to God and to the Lamb of God. Because there's going to come, hallelujah, a voice from heaven. There's going to come a voice from heaven. The seventh sound of the trumpet. Glory be to God. Anybody hear the trumpet sound? The trumpet is going to sound. It said that the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And those of us that remain, we're going to be caught up to meet the Lord, to dwell with him in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with our God. Hallelujah. We're going to our tabernacles. We'll put on our robes. Glory be to God. Robes of right for the righteousness of the saints. Hallelujah. That's not it. We go, Lord, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lamb is going to have a supper. We'll be arrayed in our clothes, our garments of righteousness. We'll sit down at his feet and be blessed. It's the beamer, y'all. It's the judgment seat of Christ. Where we are judged for our work. Hallelujah, Lord God. It will be our graduation. We'll be graduating. All things that pass away. Behold, all things are new. We are being a glorified body. 
I don't know what he'll look like when I see him. Hallelujah, Jesus. But I know when I see him, I will be just as he is. We'll be changed into his image. The image of Christ. The image that was marred. The image of God that was marred in the beginning. Now it's become the image of Christ. Hallelujah. And if you go a little further, in Revelation 19 and 11, after we have our sit-down feast, after we get our robe, after we get our crown, we will wind up. I ain't never rode a horse, but I'm going to ride a horse. He said that all the, the saints of God, arrayed in white, will be following our king, who will be ready to just come and establish his kingdom on earth. His name is called the Word of God. Name written on his lap. The Word of God. He said it's his, his garment will be dipped in blood. Glory be to God. He's going to go into that same place where this million man army will gather itself. All the chief captains, all the men of all other ages, those people who have thought to come against the one and true living God. He says he's going to gather them all together into the plain of Jehoshaphat, to the battle of Megiddo, is the battle of Armageddon at, at Megiddo. And what will happen is the sword of the spear will go out of his mouth, which is the word of God. And it will destroy all of our enemies. Our enemies will be destroyed. The same one who danced over the saints' bodies. In Revelation 11, he said he gave power to his two prophets that they will come into the earth, the two that sit into the presence of God olive trees. He will give them power. And they will come and literally when, when fighting against the enemy when fighting against the enemy they will do so by the word of their mouth. He said fire will proceed out of their mouth. And the enemies will be destroyed. He said it will cause plagues to come. See in the likeness of Moses and Elijah that spirit still coming right back into the earth. So John was Elijah, the embodiment of the spirit. And here it is, the spirit coming right back into the earth in these last days. Glory be to God. And then he says, the beast will overcome them. And the people will be happy. They will laugh and dance in the street for three and a half days while their bodies lay there, won't even bury them. But after three and a half days, it's the same time that trumpet sounds. The same time as the seven trumpet sound, he, he said, they ride the spirit of God, life come back into them, and they stand up on their feet, and people wanted in amazement, and they hear a voice from heaven and it says, come up hither, glory be to God. I'm waiting to hear the sound of the Lord. They tell me to come up there. The trumpet is sounding now. Run into Jesus. Run into Jesus while you have time. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God and his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And those of us that are in him will reign forever and ever. As kings and priests, we are a royal priesthood. And it does not appear what we shall be. But we're going to be just like him, walking through walls. Glory be to God like Jesus did. He's going to set up his kingdom and for a thousand years we will reign on this earth. And if, as the prophet has declared in the book of Zechariah, for those who will not come to worship him, and worship him in the Feast of Tabernacles. He will cause and all the feasts, all the, the, the plagues of Egypt to come upon them. 
so we understand the ways of our Lord. That they are according to the priestly function is as a high priest of the order of Melchizedek. No beginning, no end. Greater than the Aaronic priesthood, the Levitical priesthood. Because he offered the sacrifice once. He was the offerer and he was the offering. Nobody else could have done it. And that is the reason why Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the only answer for the world today. You don't have to believe what I've said today. You can go and read the scriptures yourself. Search the scriptures. In them you think you have life, but they testify of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he is soon coming again to establish his dominion. We'll reign with him, and that won't even be the end. Because it even gets gooder than that, gets better than that. When the wicked will cease from troubling, weary will be at rest. All the saints of the ages will sit at his feet and be blessed. He said, don't even read, don't even measure outside of the temple. Don't even measure outside. And that's, that's for the Gentiles. Those who will be our subjects. Those that we will govern in the theocratic kingdom. So God will be king of all the earth. The Lord shall be king of all the earth. And there shall be just one Lord. And his name one. Well, the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And there shall be, there shall be. The Lord shall be king over all the earth. And there shall be just one Lord and his name 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 shall be one Lord shall be king over all the earth and there shall be there shall be And every tongue confess in heaven, in earth, and under the earth that Jesus the Christ, he is Lord to the glory of the Father. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, God, we bless you, Lord. We thank you for this time of opening up our understanding. Thank you for those, Lord God, who have heard things that may be disturbing, Lord, to their spirit, not understanding all, but, Lord, you said, if they be yours and the spirit of Christ dwell in them, that you will bring those things to remembrance at the exact time that they need it, that they won't be ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy and those things that are shortly to come upon the face of the earth. We thank you that despite, Lord God, the evil that will continue to grow, the darkness that will grow in the earth that you have already predetermined that there is a time limit on our captivity. There's a time limit on our suffering. There's a time limit on our tribulation. But Lord God, thank you that we've washed our robes in the blood of the Lamb and have been purified by his perfect work on Calvary's cross. We appreciate you now, henceforth and forever, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you. 
thank God for those who are watching online. Just a word to you. We appreciate you being here with us today. I know it was long, but to those who love God's presence, it is, it is a joy to be in his presence. It's a joy to be in his presence. And so I bless God for you being here today. We ask that something that will say will bless and be a blessing to your hearts. We also ask that if you would like to sow into this ministry, into the anointing of this word, you would give through the three ways that are, that are listed on our site right now. For the live, you can give through Givelify. You can give through Cash App, Cash Sign, Hepzibah EPC. That's H-E-P-H-Z-I-B-A-H-E-P-C. You can also give by our website, h-epc.org, h-epc.org. Click the donate button. It will take you to a secure website, highly.com, where you can give uh, to the Lord as he has prospered you. Amen. We ask, we ask that you give unto the Lord as he's prospered you. Uh, certainly those who are here, the saints of God, those who are watching from home, who are still uh, in quarantine, social distancing, we ask you to be faithful. The house of God has to continue. Despite the, the circumstances that happen in the world, the house of God has to continue and, and way has to be made. We appreciate God for your faithfulness in your giving. Amen. Because God will bless your seed song, not many days hence. Amen. So for all of you who have watched, we bless God for you. We ask you to join us again. Maybe next week at this time, 1130 a.m. as we go into the word of the Lord. Thank God for you and God bless you as we sign off now.